situation. It's as if God has gone berserk and is attacking him. It's as if God's brutality has floored the man. His seesaw emotions are going up and down. He doesn't know whether he's coming or going. Sometimes it's a complaint and sometimes it's a confession of trust. He surprises himself. Sometimes he's complaining and wishes for euthanasia and at other times there's such a flash of faith he wonders where did that come from? He's had a glimpse of glory that when he was the wealthy man and everything was going well, he'd never seen it like that before. But he's on this seesaw of emotions, up and down. Suffering is a tool in God's hands to mould our character. Now, hear me carefully. Job's sufferings did not happen because of his pride or any other sin. We're told in chapter 2 it was without any reason. But one of the byproducts of suffering is that our lives are laid bare utterly exposed and in the white light of God's purity everything lies open before him with whom we have to do now it's like that anyway but we don't see it like that until everything collapses and we begin to see things in a different light. Job was so busy defending himself <coughs> that he couldn't for the life of him see this. He couldn't see that God was using circumstances, Sabean raids on his livestock, freak lightning storms, marauding Chaldeans, even Satan, that old serpent, he couldn't see that God was using all these agencies as marvellous agencies to bring him to a very gracious and wise end into a large place of abundant blessing. You see, for the believer, all things work together for good, to them that are the called according to his purpose. All things. Now, it's a cliche to say that God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform, but nonetheless, it is true. And we need to recognize how God moves in our lives as believers. He can use cancer, though you want to get rid of it. He can use bereavement, Though you wish it had never happened, he can use redundancy. He can use broken engagements and a broken heart. He can use divorce. He can even use deportation to serve his greater glory. With hindsight, we see a purpose in it, and lessons are learned. So don't let circumstances get between you and God. There's coming a day 
when dark providences never understood before will be clearly seen and all that puzzles us now will become plain to us in the light of heaven and on that day we will gladly admit you have done all things well now it doesn't feel like it now and it doesn't look like it while we're going through it in time but the scripture says we know that all things work together for good it doesn't say we understand it doesn't say we feel we know it's a faith step and statement we know all things work together for good to them that love God to the called according to his purpose in this life with all its unanswered questions and apparent and real injustices we are the believing head scratchers who keep on saying I don't know why and people come and they suggest this and that and, and we just say yes God is good God is true I trust him God is love then explain this explain this I don't know why part of being human is we're left asking the question why El Nathan wrote a hymn that carried these words I know not what of good or ill may be reserved for me of weary ways or golden days before his face I see but I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. Have you ever wondered why, why does God bother giving light to the miserable? Why does he bother?